JPA Buddy is an IntelliJ IDEA plugin that helps developers to work efficiently with Hibernate and Eclipse Link, Spring Data JPA, Flyway and Liquibase, Lombok, Mapstruct, and other related technologies in both Java and Kotlin. The plugin is intended to make it easier to get started with JPA and related technology, boost productivity for developers of all grades, and make sure that the generated code follows best practices and will not fail at runtime. JPA Buddy delivers intuitive wizards to work with JPA objects, JPA entities, Spring Data JPA repositories, Liquibase change logs, SQL files, and others. Automatic database migration scripts generation for both Flyaway and Liquibase, smart inspections to make the code better, JPA entities generation based on tables, that is, reverse engineering, and Visual DTO designer and mapper code generator. You can use the plugin in any project with Spring Boot, Jakarta Enterprise Edition, Quarkus, Micronaut, or even without any framework. JPA Buddy is recognized by hundreds of thousands of Java developers, including Java rock stars and champions. The plugin is one of the most loved by IntelliJ IDEA users. Visit our website to find out how JPA Buddy can assist you and make you even more productive. Now we're going to show it in action. In this video, we'll use JPA Buddy and IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate to create a simple but fully working project management service. This service will store data about users' assignments to projects and tasks and expose a REST API for projects management and search. It'll take about 15 minutes to implement this service. Let's assume that we have an existing database and now we need to build an application using this data. The database has two tables, user and project. The project table contains complete information about a project, its name, start and end dates, and reference to a user, its manager. The user table contains essential data only, username and password. We'll start the application development by creating entities from the existing database tables. Then we'll extend the user entity by adding the email attribute to it. For the application, we'll need a new entity, task. After we create it, we'll generate migration scripts to synchronize the changes in the JPA model with the database using JPA Buddy. To implement the REST API, we'll create DTOs and Spring Data repositories to use them in REST controllers. Let's start creating a Spring Boot application with the Spring Framework Starter website. We'll use Java 11, Gradle as the build tool, and the latest stable Spring Boot version. The application will be deployed as a JAR package. Also, let's use meaningful names for the application. For the application, we'll need the following libraries. Spring Data JPA to use JPA and data repositories in the application, Hibernate Validator to enable data validation for the entities, PostgreSQL driver for database access, Flyaway as a database versioning tool, and SpringWeb to create REST endpoints. JPA Buddy detects libraries attached to the project and enables the corresponding features. For example, entity attributes validation won't be available if you don't have the Hibernate validator library in the project's class path. Now, let's download, unpack the project, and open it in the IntelliJ IDEA. When we open a new blank application, we usually ask ourselves, how do I create entities? Which annotations should I specify for entities? And how do I create DB migration scripts? JPA Buddy plugin will assist you with answering those questions. Let's install JPA Buddy plugin from the IntelliJ Marketplace. Start typing the plugin name in the search field. Select and install the plugin. You can see the JPA structure window that will help you to deal with the JPA subsystem in your project. Let's set up a DB connection with the help of JPA Buddy and update the application configuration file. Enter the server address, database username, and password. Please note that in your local environment, values may be different. 
JPA Buddy provides a useful intention to add data source connection data to the application properties file. Use the IntelliJ IDEA Show Context Actions shortcut and select the Data Source menu. Choose the connection, set the Hibernate DDL Auto property to Validate, and select the Hibernate Show SQL checkbox. Since we have existing tables in the database, we need to prevent the flyway from failure when we run migrations for the first time. Let's specify the Baseline on Migrate property in the application configuration to do this. We have a database connection and we're ready to create entities. First, we need to create user and project entities based on the existing database tables. Select the Entities from Database option in the wizard. Define a new package, Entities, to store new classes and pick the Project table. JPA Buddy suggests attribute types based on table column definitions. Select the Manager ID reference column. JPA Buddy automatically selects the related table. Let's import all columns for this table. Also, JPA Buddy allows us to create a back reference from users to their projects. It's not defined in the database, but looks right for the JPA data model. Please note that JPA Buddy detects ID type, identity, for our case. Let's modify the user entity. We'll add a column to store an email address for each user. The plugin provides JPA Palette and JPA Inspector tool windows to edit entities. Let's use JPA Palette to add a new basic attribute to the entity. Double click or drag and drop the basic type element and specify the email name for the attribute. We need to set a validation rule for this attribute. Let's do it with the JPA Inspector. The user entity is ready. Now let's move to the project entity. For those who prefer keyboard shortcuts over tool windows or want to save screen space, JPA Buddy provides a minimalistic mode. Let's enable it and enjoy a clean screen with project structure and code only. All JPA Buddy panels will be hidden. Palettes and actions will be available in standard IntelliJ IDEA windows such as Project Panel, Generate Menu, and so on. Now we need to create the task entity. Open the Generate menu and select Create Referenced Entity Action. The project entity is the aggregation root for our data model, so choose the One to Many Reference Type for the task entity. To assign IDs for the tasks, we'll use an identity data type. Now define the rest of the attributes. Name, Start Date, end date, and the assignee, user. We'll enable cascade operations for the tasks to update the whole entity graph at once. With JPA Buddy, we can generate database versioning scripts based on a difference between the current database schema and the existing JPA data model. We have an existing database instance, but we should be able to create this database from scratch. This is essential for the new development environment setup, testing, and so on. To achieve this, we need to create an initialization script for the existing database. Basically, it's the first version of the application database. In the Project panel, select the Init Schema Migration. Choose the source type, DB, and select the existing connection. Just a note for Liquibase users. JPA Buddy supports all features shown in this video for Liquibase as well. The initialization script is ready, and we can view it in the JPA Buddy Migration Wizard window. Since we defined the Baseline on Migrate property earlier, Flyway will execute migration scripts starting from version 2. It means that the initialization script name should start with v1 and will give it the name Baseline Migration. When we run the migration process on a new database, Flyway will check the Baseline on Migrate property 
and execute the version 1 script only if the target database is empty. Otherwise, it will start with the version 2 script. Now we can generate database migration scripts for JPA model changes. In the Project panel, select the Diff Version Migration menu. We'll use Model as a source for comparison and Database as a target. We can have a look at the SQL and exclude some migrations if needed before saving files. Now we can create an initial data for the application, a sample project with a manager and a couple of tasks. To simplify script creation, JPA Buddy provides visual wizards for most SQL statements. Let's add insert statements to add sample data to the migration file. Now let's create the Spring Data JPA repository and expose it as the REST API. First, we create a CRUD repository for the project entity and add a method to search for projects by name. JPA Buddy provides visual designers to simplify this task. We'll put the repository to a separate package, Repositories. In the IntelliJ IDEA Generate menu, select the Repository method and choose the Method Find Collection option to create a JPA repository method. The method should return a list. To create a proper name, select the name attribute and is operator. The search will be case sensitive. That's it. The repository and its method are ready. To speed up the search, we need to alter the database schema and add an index for the project table and name column. Let's open the entity source code, place the cursor over the name attribute and invoke the create index action. Don't forget to generate a migration script for the index creation. To see all unfinished projects, we need one more method. It'll search for projects with unfinished tasks. In the designer, we need to compose a repository query to select all projects that contain tasks with a finish date equal to null. And we're only one step away from creating the REST API. Exposing entities via REST API may be considered a bad practice. Let's create DTOs for our project entity. Before doing this, we need to add a mapping framework to covert entities to DTOs and vice versa. For our application, we'll use MapStruct. Now we can create DTOs. Place the cursor over an entity name, open the Context Actions menu, and select Create DTO and JPA Buddy will show us a DTO designer window. All DTOs will be placed in a package called DTOs. For the project DTO, we'll select ID, Name, Manager, and Tasks. For the Manager and Tasks, we'll create DTOs as separate classes. For the project's DTO, we also need to specify a mapper class, Project Mapper. Let's put it in a separate package, Mappers. OK, we have repositories to extract data and DTOs to send it via API. The next step, REST controllers. Let's create a new sub-package with controllers and class project controller in it. To transform plain Java class to a REST controller, we'll need to annotate it with REST controller annotation. In the repository, we'll work with projects. Let's inject the Project Repository class and Project Mapper interface into the controller. We'll use constructor-based injection. Now we can expose the repository's methods. First, we'll create a get method handler to search the project by name and return a DTOs list. The handler will accept the project name in the URL as a path parameter. In the method body, we'll pass the parameter value to the repository and convert the result into DTOs. The next API method is the post handler, which saves a project. We pass a project description in JSON format in the request body to the method and return the saved instance.
The last method is the post handler, which updates an existing project. First, we need to verify that the past DTO contains the ID value or the project with this ID exists. If we cannot find the project, we throw an exception. If the project exists, we just update it using the information passed in the DTO and then return a new DTO with the updated project data. Now we're ready to test our application. We'll use the IntelliJ IDEA web client to do this. Let's create a new project using the REST API. We have an endpoint to search for the project by its name, and we can use it to find the project we've just created. Now we can update the project. In the DTO, we'll pass only the project ID and new field values for one of the tasks. Let's make the Search API call again and ensure that the changes have been applied. And that's it! Now we have a fully functional application with REST API and JPA. In this video, we've created a CRUD Spring Boot service for projects and tasks management using IntelliJ IDEA and JPA Buddy. Thank you for watching!